Hey Beeves, I'm Mary from Humble Bee and Me, and today we are going back to basics with the gorgeous, super simple whipped shea butter. A couple months ago, I shared a super simple moisturizing lotion formulation in video, and so this is sort of in that same vein, and it's all about whipped shea butter body butter. This gorgeous formulation is all natural and features just four simple ingredients. There's shea butter, sunflower oil, cornstarch, and just a titch of vitamin E. If you want to learn more about the ingredients in this formulation, please make sure you are reading the blog post linked in the description box below. I've done a full breakdown there, and then there's also a list of sort of extended reading, recommended reading to help sort of further educate you about how this type of formulation works. I wanted the video to focus a bit more on process. So the first thing I wanna to touch on is we are cold processing this body butter. That means we're not using any heat. We're not melting the shea butter and letting it cool. We are starting with it at room temperature and whipping it that way. In addition to cold processing just kind of being easier and faster, another major benefit of cold processing a body butter is that it allows us to avoid the opportunity for the shea butter to go grainy. Shea butter is one of those butters that can get a little lumpy, a little grainy, have those little kind of sand-like bits in it when it's been melted, if it's been cooled improperly. So if it hasn't been melted, it can't cool improperly. So no problem. Because we aren't melting it, it's very important that your shea butter is nice and smooth as is. So take a little bit, rub it between your fingers. If you feel any kind of sandy grains there that are slow to melt, that's not a shea butter you want to use in this formulation. Another part of the technique is that we are whipping this, so you will need some sort of electric mix mastery thing, the sort of thing that you would use to cream butter and sugar together while making cookies. One of the biggest challenges with whipped body butters is getting that butter to oil ratio just right. And I have talked about this in the video and in the blog post, but later on in the video, I do have a little bit of a show and tell where you can see different ratios between the oil, the liquid oil and the shea butter. So you can start to get a feel for how a change of 5% impacts the consistency of the end product. I think that's enough preamble. Please, for the love of all things Shea and Wonderful, make sure you are reading the partner blog post, which is linked in the description box below. There's so much helpful information there and compared with the video, you'll learn a lot. But come on, let's go whip up some Shea butter. We'll begin our super simple whipped shea butter formulation with our shea butter. So this is the core ingredient of the formulation. And this here is some beautiful unrefined shea butter from Baraka Shea Butter here in Canada. And this was a gift. So in this bowl, we have 22 grams of unrefined shea butter, which represents 55% of the formulation. We're going to begin by whipping just the shea butter by itself. So to this end, we have the shea butter in a whipping friendly bowl. So you can see that this is relatively deep with a reasonably narrow top. You don't want a really, really wide bowl because if you, you know, whip it in a really wide sort of more shallow bowl, you will spray product everywhere. And then we have our electric mix master thing with just one beater. This is you know, more than enough for this little batch. So I like to begin by just squishing the shea butter down a little bit with the mixer kind of breaking up any clumps. And once you have mashed that down so it's a bit more uniform and you don't have any like really large chunks and lumps, we're going to whip this until it's uniform and smooth. I recommend stopping and scraping down the mixture at least once or twice as you whip so you can make sure you're getting everything. And now it's time to add the rest of our ingredients. So in this little dish, I have 5.8 grams of cornstarch, but you could use arrowroot starch or rice starch or a different starch if you want. And in this bowl, I have 12 grams of sunflower oil. And then that little sort of slightly darker yellowy blob there is 0.2 grams vitamin E oil. If you wanted to add an essential oil or a fragrance oil, this would be when you would add it as well. Please refer to the blog post linked in the description box below for details on how to do that. I like to give this a bit of a stir as well before we whip to ensure that we don't spray cornstarch around the studio. In this round of whipping, we are looking for the mixture to lighten significantly in color. So you should notice that it shifts from a sort of more grayish hue to something a little bit brighter, a little bit whiter. So here on the side of the bowl, you can see that color shift. So here's a little bit of the mixture that hasn't been worked in. And you can see that it's not as light as the rest of it, but now we're gonna scrape down the bowl and get everything incorporated and whip it again. If you're looking for an edge to wipe your spatula off on, your beaters can be a great place to do that.
Once the mixture has lightened in color and is, you know, uniform and whippy and you can kind of dab it and get nice soft peaks, that is about it. So at this point in time, you could package it if you wanted to. I'm going to leave it to sit for a little while because I've got a little bit of a show and tell for you as part of this video. So yes, I will see you in a few hours. All right, so it has been about five hours and it's time for a bit of a show and tell. So this is the version that we've been working on and making and here are two previous ones. And I'm showing you all three of this so you can get an appreciation for how different ratios of the soft shea butter and the liquid sunflower oil impact the final product. Between all three of these, the concentrations of cornstarch and vitamin E are the same. So that's 14 and percent cornstarch and half a percent vitamin E for 15% of the total formulation. This one here, is 45% shea butter and 40% sunflower oil. This one is 50% shea butter and 35% sunflower oil. And this one, the one that we're making today, is 55% shea butter and 30% sunflower oil. I'll be referring to these just by the shea concentration. So 55, 50, and 45. So the 45 one is the softest. So you can see <laughs> it's more liquid than not. I was able to whip this up and get kind of some soft peaks, but as it's settled and it is summer here as well, it has softened even further. So you can see that's uh, lovely still, but if you wanted a whipped body butter, this probably isn't the ratio you will want unless you live somewhere really quite cold. If you live somewhere really cold, you'd probably be able to whip this up and it would hold its structure a lot better. But here in the summer, uh, that's not going to be whippable. And so this is our 50% one. And so this one is definitely thicker and firmer than the 45% one, but still fairly, fairly soft. You can see we're getting some nice like soft peaks there. So it's still a lovely product, but it's not really gonna hold much of a whip. As you can see, it'll kind of eventually settle out again, unless you live somewhere colder than I am currently right now, in which case this might just be perfect for you. And then here's the version that we made today with 55% shea butter. And you can see that this one's not liquid, right? Like it <laughs> kind of push it around and it, it holds in place. It's kind of you can like pull up a little uh, peaks of it. So yeah, this is, you know, this is where we're stopping. This is what we are looking for. But if you live somewhere a lot hotter than I do, you might need to kind of expand even further in like in this direction. So we have 45, 50, 55, you might be heading towards 60, 65, 70% shea butter and reducing the liquid oil to make room for it. So that is how uh, yeah, different percentages impact your end product and that's how you'll adjust depending on if you live somewhere hotter, you know, more shea butter, colder, less shea butter. And now all that's left is packaging it up. So I'm going to be using this 50 milliliter wide mouthed plastic jar with a screw top from Yellow Bee and this was gifted. And so this is a 40 gram batch, 50 milliliter jar. Generally speaking, that works out fairly well, especially because we have whipped some air in here. So you wanna be reasonably gentle when you scoop your body butter into your jar. You could also put it in an icing bag and pipe it out with a pretty tip, but I don't have one and let's be honest, can't be arsed. And then when you unscrew the lid, if it's a well-fitting uh, batch, you get this lovely sort of swirl on top. And that's fancy enough for me. For a bit of an application demo, I'll kind of grab some of the leftovers here. It is quite rich, reasonably slow to melt on the skin, but you can see it does definitely melt down. Kind of spread it around. And it does have a surprisingly light finish for something with this much shea butter in it. And that is in big part thanks to the, uh, the cornstarch. So it's really lovely. You definitely want to be applying this in, in small concentrations on the skin because it is very rich. But yeah, it's really, really lovely. And there we go. So we just made a really lovely, super simple whipped shea butter. Please make sure you're reading the blog post. There's a ton of information there about the ingredients that we've used, you know, why we're using them in certain amounts, lots of information on troubleshooting, how to incorporate essential oils, all that stuff. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and I will see you next time.